little bit of decision time right now as we have an attack going up the road. Thinking that is Jack McCohen. Yes, Jack McCohen, the young 16 year old. McCohen leads him around the 120 degree curve, leading back out to Riverside Drive. Guys going way wide, skimming the curb. So the rider out of Texas now leading the group. Looking for a little bit of help in receiving it. Joffrey Castro, I believe that's Joffrey Castro right now on the front. Hitting the lower portion to Crybaby Hill, going around the turn. I think it's Champion Systems he's riding for. Once again, out of the saddle as McCone. I'm gonna go with McAhone. Jack McAhone following very easily behind. He's got that climber physique and he needs to be able to take advantage of it. Oh, one rider off the back right there trying to be able to get back up, perhaps having a little bit of a problem. Again, very easy. You go into that small chain ring and it's very easy to throw the chain, slow down completely. You have to be able to get that back on and chase back on and connect if you want any chance of a result. We've seen three or four times with riders dropping the, the chain. Trey Shepard once again coming up to the front. 26 years old, Trey Shepard, right behind him following on his wheels is Henry Lee. So the riders are out on course and they're fighting for the crown of the 2021 Tulsa Tough Champion. The Grand Fondo started off. There were two days at the Grand Fondo along with the townie ride. And at the Grand Fondo, riders had a choice of uh, 25, I think 25, 50 or 70 miles. Uh, a little bit shorter overall today than what they had on some of the other yesterday. But it was also part of the ACE Challenge. If you rode yesterday and you rode today, you'd be able to get membership, I would call it, into the ACE Challenge. Is that Malcolm uh, going to try to take a layoff? Malcolm welcoming everybody in the morning. That's our race director doing a fantastic job. Legion of Los Angeles also there to be able to lead the riders out. Temperature is not as hot as some of the other days. But another great day of cycling. A great day of biking, the great day of being outside and being with each other. Obviously, it's got to feel fantastic post-pandemic, or let's just say a little bit post-pandemic, kind of getting over that hump and being able to actually do a group ride like this. So as they head out, they went out to, to the countryside to be able to enjoy the sights and sounds of the surrounding area of Tulsa. You see many riders 
just kind of cruising in different groups and stopping at the sag stops getting something to eat getting something to drink having a good time pretty much had all day uh for the grand final starting at about 7 30 a.m riders were out there just kind of riding around and enjoying themselves and once they got back lots of great food sitting under the shade sitting in the tents getting something to drink some good beer and of course a full day of bike racing great thing about a grand fondo like this you know it's it doesn't matter how long you've been racing it doesn't matter if you just first started doesn't matter what kind of bike which is a perfect example like right there a mountain bike a commuter bike uh, you know you just have your friends or maybe you're not used to it you have tennis shoes you don't have the whole clipless thing or the whole lycra kit uh, everybody's welcome and that's part of you know kind of introducing people to the sport of cycling and, and it's important to be inviting it's important to be able to make those people feel like they are welcome to the sport and to be able to show them and escort them along the way let it be young kids older people making sure that everybody has a good time and that's the number one priority of the Tulsa Tough Grand Fondo making it fun making it inviting and having a great time which is all part of the Tulsa Tough Grand Fondo Trey Shepard would be out there I know it and he'd be tearing it up he would be right in the fast group in the Grand Fondo and that's a great thing you have the fast group to where the guys go fast up front and you have the other group that just kind of cruises behind it's your choice you could decide what group you want to ride in but in a bike race there's one spot you want to be in which is in the front and right now rider from upland he hasn't gotten a win here day one he missed out and day two he missed out so he wants to be able to change that the 26 year old out of indiana right now is trey shepherd trying to go around these turns as quick as he can but he's been joined and the rider in that red helmet that is your day one winner dempsey Safuentes. So Fuentes is a pretty good sprinter. Obviously, we saw that from the day one sprint, taking a, a win earlier this year in the Gambler Criterium. Last year, getting two big wins with winning the 2020 Land Round and Crosswinds. And, you know, not so long ago, it's a 2019. I mean, he's a young rider. 2019, uh, he was still racing as a junior rider. His brother also is racing, Emerson Safuantes, and he has a, a, a couple years older, a couple year older brother. Now this is interesting because I'm not sure what Trey was doing right there. Trey like opened up like two or three bike links on Safuantes, let him kind of get a little bit of a run at the hill and then came up behind him, but now they seem to have rejoined. Lots of racing to go. Eight laps to go. Plenty of time to be able to make a mark on this race. Plenty of time to shake things up. Plenty of time to change things or have it all collapse on you. Yeah, I think that group is continuing to dwindle about, I don't know, maybe six laps ago, 45 riders were left in the group. Now it's looking maybe down to 30. New guy starting to be able to come up. Macahone doing a good job reacting to the situation. So Fuentes goes through, two more riders go through, and then it's Macahone trying to be able to bridge the gap. The young 16-year-old latching onto the wheels. Everybody in chase mode right now. They realize the day one got to be dangerous, so he is going up the road. He's got speed, and right now today he's showing strength. looking so comfortable it's like yesterday didn't even affect him he was second yesterday 
on a on a harder circuit than day number one. Not as hard as today. I'll, for sure, today is a. Uh, I like the, the, the dad running alongside, uh, trying to be able to cheer advice to whoever is out there. not even bother pulling it off pulling off there you go finally Dempsey Swint <laughs> he was like surprised he's like what there's people on my wheel better get up there you got a whole slew of riders coming up there Dempsey I think putting himself a little bit in the hurt locker extending himself a little bit too much as the three riders now are just riding away from him perhaps a little bit of unaware of what was going on behind him but I can't imagine Him having that kind of inexperience with the type of results that he has, especially the way he rode so well on day number one and day number two. Now it's up to... McCohen, just trying to figure out. I don't know if it's McCohen or McCohen. M-A-K-O-H-O-N. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with McCohen. It's a little bit easier, but that young 16 year old doesn't matter, looking phenomenal. Hydrating, looking super well as right now, being able to tackle Crybaby Hill. It's the flat section that seems to be giving him some trouble. Yeah, you're in no man's land. McCohen has to be able to reach on. Guys are splintering. Everybody's falling apart out here right now except for the one rider from Elevate going away. McCohen trying to be able to remain in contact. Six laps to go.